Hi everybody and welcome back to Donny Boy 73 the small engine doctor. Today I'm going to show you how to take apart a carburetor on a 7 horsepower Tecumseh engine on a snowblower. And here's the snowblower that you saw in the previous Q&A video. It's an older 7 horsepower Tecumseh engine. I would say this thing is at least 30 years old or more. The symptoms with this machine is that it will only run with the gas that you pour into the carburetor after that it stops. I've also tried adjusting the carburetor screws and it makes no difference. So at this point I'm going to take the carburetor off and if necessary rebuild it. If it does not need a rebuild then I will only clean it up. So to start with if you have an electric starter just remove the two screws and pull the thing off. Next you'll need to remove the Phillips screw over here. You'll need to pull the choke knob from here. Just be careful because you don't want it to break. And now you'll need to remove the two screws here that are already partially removed. And now the whole cover should come right off. On this cover here there's an actual ignition switch just to turn it off. Usually it's not what you're going to see here. But anyways this wire came off from the end of it. When I put it back on I'm going to re-solder it over here. And you'll need to remove the primer line. And now the cover is completely off. Now I'm going to remove the throttle cable by loosening the screw over here. And it's just a slotted screw. So I'll just grab the cable, lift it up, and then twist it out of the mechanism over here. Now before you take the carburetor completely off, it's important that you look at the configuration of the spring and the linkage. You want to make sure that when you put the carburetor back on that these are in the exact same position as when you took it off. So take a good note, you can even take pictures with your digital camera if you want to. Or you can refer to this video as many times as you want. Now at this point what we need to do is remove the two nuts holding the carburetor. There's one over here and there's one on this side over here. And to do this you're going to need a 7 16 wrench. There's not much room to work in there but I don't like taking the muffler off because sometimes the bolts are pretty rusted. And just loosen the nut till you can get it off by hand. And now you'll need to get the nut off on the other side. A common problem that happens when you try to take the carb off by removing the nuts is that the whole bolt will turn with the nut. Therefore you can't get it off as you see in this case here. So if that happens to you, grab a large Phillips screwdriver and then reach in and take off the Phillips screw on this side, way at the back over here. Here's a top view of it. And on the other side of the carb, you're going to see a Phillips screw over here that needs to be removed as well. Your screwdriver is going to be on an angle, but it will come off. Now the carburetor will separate from the engine, but you still have a lot of stuff attached to the carb. The first thing I'm going to do is loosen the Phillips screw over here because there's wires attached to it. And one of those wires goes to this bracket over here on the carb. Actually on this engine you have to remove the screw completely because it's a little eyelet that the wires go through. Now you're going to notice a wire attached to the carburetor bracket over here. I'm going to remove that wire just by pulling on the tab. Now I'm going to disconnect the fuel line and I've got a container ready for the fuel to go in. Now the fuel is colored because it's mixed gas. I don't recommend using mixed gas in your snowblower because it can carbon up the piston and the valves. But if you're in a jam, it's okay to do that once or twice, it won't hurt anything. So now that I've got all the fuel drained from the fuel tank, all I need to do is to remove the linkage from the governor arm over here. This is how the linkage is in the governor arm, as you can see. So I'm just going to tilt it up. And then pull it out. Now I've got the carburetor completely off the snowblower and I'm ready to work on it. So set yourself up on a nice clean area. There might still be a bit of fuel left in the carburetor when you take it apart. So at this point the first thing I'm going to do is remove the bottom bowl nut. You're going to need a 7 16 wrench for this. And 
and it's pretty stiff getting off. That's usually caused by old gas that's been sitting in the carb for years. It's usually much easier to remove a bowl net than this. And it stinks. It stinks like really old gas. The old gas that came out of the carb actually smells like varnish. That's why they say sometimes the fuel will varnishize itself. Well, this is a classic example. Now I'll just pull the bowl off. And look at that. Whoa, that's pretty atrocious. It's pretty easy to figure out why the machine wouldn't start unless you sprayed quick start in the carb. I'm going to start by removing the float. Hopefully the pin's not jammed. That's a good thing. It came off pretty easy. Just pull on it. And then pull the float right out. The needle should come out with it. Next, take off the O-ring over here. And at this point, I'm not going to replace the Welsh plug unless I still have problems after I've rebuilt the carburetor. Now with my Tecumseh tool number 670377, I'm going to remove the needle seat from inside the carburetor. If you don't have this tool, a crochet hook will work perfectly as well. So reach in, push right to the bottom. The hook's going to go in through the seat. When you can't push anymore, you know you're behind the seat. Then what you do is you pull out and the seat will come out. And you'll see the seat above the hook. Now just remove it and you can throw this out. Now I replace the cardboard because the old fuel tank so badly. Now grab a slotted screwdriver and remove the air mixture screw from the side of the carburetor. You want to get it right out completely. Now you can reach in with your Tecumseh tool or the crochet hook and grab the o-ring and the little washer that's in there. Now at this point what I'm going to do is I'm not going to clean the float and the bowl. It's cheaper to just replace them than to charge a customer to clean it. And I'm going to put in a new carb kit as well. Now what I'm going to do is spray some carb cleaner on the carburetor and let it sit overnight. If you have carburetor cleaner in the bucket, you can just soak it in the bucket. If you have an ultrasonic cleaner, you can clean it in that as well. So now I'm going to spray some inside the emulsion tube over here, all around here, in where the seat goes. I'm going to spray some where the fuel line goes and when you spray it in here you want to see it come out over here just like that. That means it's not plugged. And I'm going to spray some where the air mixture screw goes in. Usually the most critical area I find that needs to be cleaned very good on these carburetors when they're dirty like this is the emulsion tube inside here. You can also spray some carb cleaner where the primer line hooks up. Always wear safety glasses when spraying the cleaner in the car because it can come out from another hole and hit you right in the face. Now I'm just going to let it soak and I'll be back tomorrow to work on it in the morning.